Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. A lot of you know that I've been dealing with some medical issues recently so I had to take a little bit of a break from posting for my mental health but it feels so good to be recording another voiceover for you guys. In this week's video I will be showing you what I eat in a week to basically heal my gut and look after my gut microbiome. I was on an antibiotic for about two years and I think that did a lot of damage to my gut and I feel like I've gotten to a point where it's pretty healed and I think this is the diet that helped. So I thought I would share in case any of you are dealing with similar issues. I love to focus on what to incorporate rather than what to limit. So that's what this video will be focused on. But if you guys wanna read some more detailed sources on what kinds of foods are potentially damaging for the gut, then I will link a few articles down below. But yeah, let's get into it. So every single morning I chug a bunch of water and take this daily probiotic. I can link it down below in case you're interested. And then I usually love to drink one of these forager probiotic cashew milk yogurts the idea is that it like is similar to kefir and that it has all that good bacteria this is the blueberry flavor it's super tasty and then this morning i decided to have some oatmeal these are the two like instant oatmeal options i have i usually don't do instant but like sometimes i'm just too busy with work to make it from plain rolled oats and the way i think of it anything that's high in fiber is good for the gut so i made that and then i also had some black tea Tea, which boosts healthy gut bacteria and helps with immunity. My favorites are all gray. Apparently the active ingredient here are polyphenols. Onto the oatmeal, I added some bananas, which are a great probiotic. I also added pumpkin seeds, some sliced almonds, both of which have polyphenols and fatty acids, which are great for the gut, and a tiny little drizzle of orange blossom honey, as well as a sprinkle of cinnamon. And then to my tea, I added a splash of oat milk. I found this to be such a comforting yet solid breakfast. Like it keeps me full for so long and I really do feel truly sustained when I have my oats. But yeah, that was breakfast. For lunch on this day, I decided I would make a black bean burger sandwich thing and kind of just like load it up with all the goods. Beans and legumes as well as olive oil are known to be good for the gut. And then I went ahead and toasted my whole grain bread, which, you know, has always been my alternative to white bread just because it feels more satisfying. And then I went ahead and also fried up some tempeh with a little bit of soy sauce and this liquid smoke, which is like kind of a game changer. Highly recommend you invest in it if you are like a plant-based eater. It really makes things taste like they're straight off the grill. But anyways, I also added some plant-based cheese to the burger as well. This is BioLife's provolone flavor, I believe. And while that was melting, I went ahead and added some mustard to my toast. I feel like you can never go wrong with a little Dijon. I think we actually have like three different kinds of Dijon mustard in our fridge right now, so it's good. I had it on this day. We gotta, we gotta finish that stuff out. <laughs> and then layered on a couple leafy greens, as well as the star of the show, the burger. Then I put some ketchup on the other side, layered on my little tempeh nugs. And then I decided to add some sauerkraut, which is like always number one on the list of like probiotics to include in your diet. And I feel like if you get creative with it, like it's not that much of a pain to include. It actually really rounded out this sandwich, I felt like, and it was kind of the perfect place for it. So yeah, there's my magnificent black bean burger and on the side I just had a little leftover salad with like this ginger miso dressing which coincidentally those two ingredients will make a reappearance later on in the video because they are also great for gut bacteria but yeah here was my sandwich I have lots of b-roll of it just because of how beautiful and colorful it came out And then to drink, I decided to have this pomegranate health aid kombucha. Kombucha is a known superpower when it comes to, you know, fermented foods. It's also a great alternative for me as someone who doesn't drink alcohol. It's also really tasty. It might be a bit of an acquired taste, but yeah, my favorite brand is the health aid one and highly recommend you try this flavor. For dinner on this night, I decided that garlic was going to be the star of the show. A little while ago, I feel like roasting garlic whole was really popping up on TikTok, mostly because of how satisfying it looked to squeeze it out of its little pods once it was cooked, but I never got on that trend, so I wanted to try it. I slathered two bulbs of garlic in some avocado oil and I put it in the oven to roast. While that was in the oven, I decided to have some oolong tea, which is great for acid reflux. I don't suffer from this, but you know, like I said before, any black tea really is going to be great for digestion and the gut. So I sipped on that. And 
then once my garlic was done, I went ahead and let it cool for 30 minutes before opening up the foil and mixing it into this vegan pesto that I got from Sprouts. My idea with this was basically that I didn't want to make the whole sauce from scratch, but I definitely want it to have like a richer and deeper flavor than it would have just on its own. So I think the garlic definitely did that. And if you're wondering, yes, the squeezing of the garlic was very satisfying, albeit very messy as well. So you win some, you lose some. I decided to also slice in some cherry tomatoes and then for my pasta, oh yeah, by the way, I decided to make a pasta. Um, <laughs> for my spaghetti, I used this Barilla red lentil spaghetti, which like I said before, beans are a great alternative to regular pasta if you can find it. So yeah, I just mixed in the sauce, topped it with some nutritional yeast, and voila! There you have like a very balanced, protein-filled, but also carbolicious dinner. have to say the garlic made a huge difference. It was really, really delicious. And I think when you roast it for that long, it just brings out like some kind of sweetness or earthiness that you don't really get when you cook it in other ways. So yes, this was a very delicious dinner. I should repeat it again soon. For breakfast on day two, I decided to go with like a super simple scrambled egg platter. So I took my pasture raised organic eggs, you know, Vital Farms is the MVP with getting as ethical as you can in a grocery store. I sprinkled them with a little salt and scrambled them up in a bowl before cutting up some tempeh. Again, I just seasoned it in the pan with same thing as before, so a little liquid smoke and some soy sauce so they were extra crispy. And then at the last minute, I threw in my eggs went ahead and scrambled those and this is the breakfast that I do when I know that I just have been missing protein you know I'm just craving some protein but I don't want to try too hard to get it um <laughs> so yeah on the side I also sauteed up some baby kale just to add in a little dark leafy green action as well as some extra fiber and then I also threw in some raspberries, which are a great prebiotic, both because of their polyphenol and antioxidant content. Since this breakfast was eaten at noon, the next meal I had was an early dinner around like 4 or 5 p.m. For this meal, I decided to make some plant-based Cajun chicken along with some onions, mushrooms. I wanted to roast some asparagus as well on the side, and then I also made this chickpea risoni, which I subbed in for rice. So the first thing I did was chop off the ends off my asparagus. I know I probably went a little overboard with it, but I really don't like the butt. Um, <laughs> asparagus are a great prebiotic, and I I actually didn't used to like them until I realized that you just need to roast them with lots of olive oil, salt, and spices at a high temperature for a short amount of time. So I usually do like 400 or even 425 for like 15, 20, 25 minutes. Just make sure you're watching them and then they'll be done when they're done. And then I chopped up my mushrooms and onions for the pan. Onion is always great to include because it is a prebiotic and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce these compounds that are apparently what make them so magical, but you you can read them on the screen. And then I went ahead and salted my water for my risoni. While I was cooking, I got a little hungry, so I snacked on one of these little probiotic yogurt drinks, and I also snacked on these Himalayan pink salt lentil chips, which are a great alternative to a plain potato chips. The bag was really hard to open for some reason, don't judge me. They were okay, probably won't be repurchasing. I think there are better gluten-free snacks that you can find at the store. But yeah, these are the daring fake chicken strips. I don't even know what to call them. Say and, you know, soy protein, whatever. They're pretty good. I do add extra seasoning. Having the mushrooms and the onion in the pan also adds a lot of extra flavor. But yeah, since the rice is made of chickpeas, that counts as legumes, which is always great. And soon enough, everything was done and looking absolutely scrumptious. I went ahead and served myself and very much enjoyed this meal. This is a great example of something called like a nourish bowl, which is a great way of ensuring that you have like your carbs, your fats, and your proteins all covered. Obviously I cooked everything in olive oil, so there's the fats, lots of fiber and all the veg, got some protein in the plant-based chicken and in the chickpea rice. So yeah, overall a super great well-rounded meal. And then to drink, I had my mint limeade kombucha, which is my favorite flavor out of all of them. But yeah, this delicious meal made me a very very happy human indeed. 
later that night i got a little hungry so i decided to whip up this like instant miso cup soup miso is always great because it's basically fermented soybean paste as you can see the one i'm consuming here is in a powder so it's just been dried out and rehydrated by the boiling water that i added in these are pretty inexpensive you can find them at the store and then after my little soup i decided to have some ginger tea which always feels great in my little tummy it has some lemon and honey in it too and then i had some dark chocolate which surprisingly is good for you who knew that something sweet could be good for you no i'm just kidding obviously everyone should be able to enjoy sweets in moderation but i really recommend this brand who they have some great flavors for my birthday katie my roommate got me like 20 bars and i'm still working my way through so thank you katie for supporting my apparently healthy dark chocolate habit <laughs> for breakfast on day three i decided to make a gluten-free coconut yogurt and granola bowl using my absolute top favorite vegan yogurt from coco yo it's the same brand that does gt's kombucha it's a little fizzy but once you get over like the interesting carbonation aspect of it it's really really delicious they have different flavors as well and yeah then i just put on this vanilla grain free clusters granola as well as some banana slices and a healthy dollop of peanut butter because who doesn't like peanut butter in their granola and yeah that's the final product super simple and easy only four ingredients now that i think of it if i'm craving something a little bit more substantial i'll do like a hard-boiled egg on the side but overall because of all the fiber this is a meal that keeps me pretty full and here we go another day where i'm having lunch slash dinner slash dinner after dark but this was my next meal i decided to chop up some broccoli and put it in a pan to steam with just a touch of water and then once that was softened up a bit i sprinkled a little bit of sea salt on top and sliced in some vegan sausage i think this is the field roast brand this was the spicy italian and fennel sausage i think and then for seasoning i just used a little bit of onion powder and some extra olive oil as well as a red pepper seasoning i don't think i was very hungry on this day so that's why there was like no major carb food group but to up the probiotic factor I put a fair amount of sauerkraut in there and it paired really well with the uh, vegan sausage if I do say so myself I think this was a day that I like had my period so I like didn't move at all so I basically didn't burn any energy which just meant that I wasn't very hungry so I just want to emphasize that our body's needs change every day and just because you know I didn't have many carbs in this particular meal doesn't mean that I eat like this normally or all the time this is just what my body was telling me that I needed in this moment. I also had some kombucha to drink and yeah it was a pretty delicious meal for what I needed in that moment. Here you can see I did a little cheers. That's cute. Later on, I decided to have some tea time with my friends who came over. Green tea is great for overall digestion, but has like lots of anti-inflammatory properties as well. And it's been proven to help stomach cramps. So because I was on my period, it was kind of the perfect all for one situation. Okie dokie, on to day four. On this day, I decided to make good use of the leftover chickpea rice from the other day and do like a little kimchi egg rice bowl situation. So first, I just went ahead and heated up the rice in a pan while my Earl Grey steeped and then I cracked an egg in with some olive oil and I let that fry up for a bit with some salt of course and I even decided to add some avocado this time it's been hard to find good ripe avocados around so that's why they're not more featured in this video but trust me I love myself some good avo so once I sliced that in I decided to add some kimchi which is a Korean fermented cabbage so we got the sauerkraut and then we got the kimchi it's all great stuff and what you just saw there was me topping it all with some everything but the bagel seasoning which you can never ever go wrong with and voila my healthy hearty brunch is served i gotta say i was quite disappointed that the egg didn't come out runny it's because i got distracted while i was filming and cooking at the same time there's too much going on at once but yeah once my oat milk was in my tea i was so content by the way, this meal works great over white rice or brown rice or wild rice, you know, any kind of rice you have. This is just what I had left over, so I made best use of it, but I think it's a very versatile meal that you can definitely try at home. 
And then for my next meal, I was basically craving everything green. So I got this super greens creamy soup. It had spinach, green peas, coconut milk, and broccoli, I think. And so I was gonna heat that up, but I wanted a little extra crunch on the side. So I decided I was also gonna roast up some Brussels sprouts and colorful potatoes. Now for the Brussels sprouts, they were fairly large. So I went ahead and cut those up into quarters so they would be more bite-sized. Brussels sprouts are great because they have all kinds of good bacteria and fiber and sulfur that combat unhealthy bacteria that can grow in your gut. So they were seasoned with some avocado oil, salt, garlic powder, and red pepper seasoning. And then I just put those in the oven at 400. Then I went ahead and started cutting up my potatoes. Now potatoes are amazing because at the end of the day they are a prebiotic, especially like the colorful ones for some reason. So I went ahead and seasoned those very similarly and I actually have a trick when it comes to roasting potatoes. I make sure that every single one is faced down because whatever's on the tinfoil is what's going to crisp up the most. So I make sure that that's what's going on and that they get to the maximum crispiness. Like look at that. They were so delicious to bite into. Like, can you even imagine? Oh my gosh. I bet you guys are all craving potatoes right now. Anyway, so I unstuck those from the tin foil and then quickly heated up this soup. This brand, Imagine, I think is what it's called, has really great plant-based soups of all kinds. They really got the creaminess factor down. And so yeah, I had my friend over, so I went ahead and served both of us. Given the topic of the video, it's also useful to note that the soup had peas, which are full of soluble and insoluble fiber. And yeah, that was dinner. I don't think I can remember the last time I had a dinner that was like so vegetable forward, but like I really loved it. And honestly, if I'm going for gut health, this is what more of my meals should probably look like. So yeah, I lit some candles to set the mood and this was the final product. If you wanted to add a little extra coconut milk just like to decorate it, I would highly recommend that. I just didn't have any at the time. And to drink, we had this passion fruit kombucha. I promise this video is not sponsored by Health Aid. I'm just obsessed. <laughs> And then later on, I decided to make us all some tea. This evening, I decided to pull out the oolong, which I showed you before, but also some pu air, which is a kind of fermented black tea that's got more of like a smoky flavor to it. It's pretty intense. It's probably also a bit of an acquired taste, but my boyfriend loves to have this tea in the morning when he's fasting. I don't really fast much anymore these days, but apparently it's good for that. I ended up going for the oolong this night, but everyone else had the pu air and enjoyed it very much. And then on the side I had some of this hazelnut butter dark chocolate and also the orange dark chocolate which I wasn't expecting to be as good as it was but it was really delicious. Okay, on to day five when I decided to get a little fancy for brunch. Here we have some sourdough, some sliced toasted almonds, a pear, some vegan ricotta, and my orange blossom honey. Hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna whip up. <laughs> Surprise, some pear and ricotta sourdough toast. Now sourdough is great because the dough that they use to make the bread itself is fermented. I feel like that's common knowledge at this point. So if you're not gonna do whole grain bread, then sourdough is probably the best way to go. And then pears apparently are a really lovely prebiotic. So that was my topping for today. I think apples also work too for this particular recipe if you wanna try it out at home. So yeah, I just toasted my sourdough, layered on my ricotta, sliced on my pears, and then drizzled a little bit of this honey before I went ahead and sprinkled on my almonds. And then I felt like the dish was, you know, missing a little something. So I actually went ahead and whipped out this Coco June vanilla vanilla chamomile cultured coconut yogurt and I did a couple dollops of that on the side with some raspberries and yes it was like beautiful for the picture and the video but it also tasted really nice together so I'm actually probably gonna go to the store soon and get that yogurt again because it was really really good not only was this meal aesthetic but it was just uh, it was so tasty you guys maybe I should do a video just of toasts like a week of toasts comment down below if that's a video you'd like to see and then to drink I had some chai tea which of course with all the the black pepper and the spices and everything that could be anti-inflammatory. It's also just great for your gut, just like everything else in this video. I sound like a broken record, but there's no other way to say it. <laughs> 
But yeah, this was a great breakfast. I felt like I was at a little cafe. I went to the Cheyenne Cafe. Isn't that corny or cute? I can't tell. Anyways, that was brunch. And then later on, I met my friend Maddie actually at the local co-op for dinner. And they have like a bunch of deli sandwiches. And my favorite one to get is called the Beanie Baby. It's got baked sweet potato, refried beans, avocado, arugula, pickles, red onion, and sriracha. And I like to get it on whole grain bread. I also got this peach green tea, which I think it's this little brand that's actually good for the gut. Take a shot of kombucha every time I say that. <laughs> Anyways, here I am watching my my Beanie Baby get pressed in the panini press. Instead of chips on the side, I got these tostones, which are like green plantains that are fried. And technically bananas are probiotic, right? So this counts. But yeah, this is just a great fiber-filled sandwich. If I want to add some protein, sometimes I'll ask them to put some tuna in it. This was a lovely meal. I probably get this sandwich like on average, definitely a few times a month at least. Like it's old faithful, old reliable. You can't really go wrong. And yeah, that was my meal. So yeah, those are all the foods that I had to show you this week. Comment down below if you want to see like another video in this format of, you know, showing you what probiotic foods work for me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Otherwise, go ahead and follow me on Instagram to stay up to date with what I'm doing on the daily. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!